Hey guys, so I'm working my way down through this brand new um, syllabus from Trinity, uh, the drum kit syllabus. I'm into the grade one pieces. This is a group A piece. It's called In Incien, um and it's by Mike Osborne. And it's a waltz. Um, if you're not sure what a waltz is, um, waltzes are in 3 4, and a waltz is a dance. Um, and it has to be three beats in a bar. Um, because the dance goes one, two, three, one, two, three, and as they're waltzing, they have those three beats um, per swing, I guess. Um, so the steps will line up perfectly with the three beats in about one, two, three. Um, so if you aren't quite sure about time signatures, the three, four that's written at the start of the piece there is the time signature. The top number means that there's three beats in a bar and the bottom number being a four means that they are crotchet beats. If that bottom number happened to be an eight, that would mean they were quaver beats. Um, and the, the time signature will tell you a little bit about what the piece is going to sound like. It tells you how to count it most importantly. So, um, if it says three, four and you're not counting three beats in a bar, either the there's a mistake on the music or more likely if it's sheet music you've you've miscounted um, or you've confused about something so this is a waltz um, it's in 3-4 um, and it's it's a nice leisurely piece but it's a changing piece so it can catch you out it's something that does need you're not going to be able to play this um, on site you need to practice this until you get a bit of a memory on it so um, right hands on the right cymbal um, so on one we have right and bass, on two we have uh, snare and ride, and on three we have snare and ride. So we've got that typical waltz, one, two, three. Now, the vast majority of, of uh, waltzes, you can just play that the whole way through. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Of course when it, it comes to a, a piece that they want to test your ability on, they're going to have it far more changeable. So you're going to see that change come in on the second bar. You don't have one, two, three, you have one, like normal. You have right on its own on two, snare on its own on the and, on the offbeat, and then snare and right on three. So it goes one, two, and three. So practice bar one and bar two on loop until you get comfortable. One, two, three, one, two, and three. One, two, three, one, two, and three. One, two, three, one, two, and three. One, two, three. One, two, and three. Okay. Bar 3 is identical to bar 1, 1, 2, 3, bar 4 is identical to bar 2, 1, 2, and 3. So, the reason I had you practice bar 1 and 2 on loop is because it's a, re a repeating theme in this piece and you need to get comfortable with it. So, the, the top line, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, bar 5 changes then. You've got the bass and right on one like normal, snare on its own on two, and bass and right on three. So it goes one, two, three. Same on bar six. One, two, three. Then we have a repeat back to the same as bar one on bar seven. One, two, three. And then what could be described as a fill on bar eight. You've got floor tom, second rack tom, first rack tom. One, two, three. Very, very simple but effective. It's kind of a, a rise up the toms. So let's listen to that second line. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Hope you're comfortable with that. Moving on to bar nine, we have a crash bass drum, and there's a, an accent on that crash. You can see that. What looks like a sideways V over that crash. That's an accent. They wanted to stand out. One, two, three. That's bar nine. Bar 10 is the same as bar 2. 1, 2, and 3. Bar 11, 1, 2, 3. Bar 12, 1, 2, and 3. So you will notice that that line is identical in every way to the first line except for that crash on 1. I'll play 9, 10, 11, 12 for you. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, and 3. Okay. On to the next line. 13 is 1, 2, 3. 14 is 1, 2, 3, you'll notice that's the same as 5 and 6. And now on, I guess it's called uh, 15, you've got a bass and a crash accented. One, rest on 2, rest on 3, so it just rings out for the 1, 2, 3. And then you have another fill on bar 16. It's 1, rack tom, 2, and 2nd rack tom, 3. So it's a fill down the way using quavers on the 2 and. 1, 2, and 3. You'll notice underneath that you've got 
like a greater than symbol, that's to gradually get louder. So one, two, and three. They want to hear an audible increase in volume there. Okay, let's play that line. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, and three. Okay, so that's the A section done. Moving on to uh, the B section, 17. You've got your hi-hat pedal being introduced on the two. Watch out for that because if you're right-handed, your weakest limb is going to be your left leg um, in control and if you're left-handed, your weakest limb is likely to be your right leg. So your weakest limb is usually always going to be playing your hi-hats. So to control it's a little bit challenging. So take your time with this. Don't rush it. One, two, three. See that? Hi-hat clasped on two. One, two, three. Okay? So, 17 is one, two, three. And 18 is the same as bar two. One, two, and three. Okay, let's play that 21, 20, or 17, 18. One, two, three. One, two, and three. Okay? Then we have a repeat of that on 19 and 20. One, All right, let's play that line. 17, 2, 20. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, if you're happy with that, move on to 21. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, 21 and 22 is a repeat of 17 and 18. And now you have a little change. On 23, you got 1, so you got to get the left foot and the left hand playing together for the two three, and there's nothing on the right for the two and three. One, two, three, and then we have a fill going from floor tom to second rack tom to first rack tom, exactly the same as we had on bar eight. One, two, three. Okay, let's try that line. That's twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, and twenty four. One. Okay, if that's comfortable, and you should play it a few times until you really are comfortable with it, then move on to 25. One, two, three, one, two, and three. One, two, three, one, two, and three. Okay, so that you'll have seen before um, on 17. It's, it's a carbon copy of it. Um, now we have a little bit of a change for 29. One, two, three. Right cymbal, snare drum, and hi-hat pedal clasping on the two and three. One, two, three. Same on 30. One, two, three. And now we have a fill. One, two, and three. And so it's snare, rack tom, second rack, floor tom. Two and three. And that's, it's something we're practicing. It's fun as well. There was a risk I was gonna mess that up. So I'm gonna stop now while I'm ahead. One, and then a bass and a crash on the one accented. You can see the accent on the top. One, two, three. So that bottom line. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, and three. And three. Okay, so there's your waltz. Uh, two, uh, three, four time. Counting out loud the whole way through. It's it's a piece you're not going to get first attempt, but uh, it's there's a lot of learning there. It's, it's probably the first time you've seen three, four. If if uh, you're new to drumming, um, maybe you're familiar with waltzes, maybe you're not. Go Google some waltzes, uh, go look at some of them on YouTube, you'll see the style straight away. It'll remind you that it's not the first time you've heard a waltz. You would have heard them before, I'm not sure where, but they're, like, they're in every culture. So, have a listen through, let me know how you get on, um, let me know if these videos are helpful, um, let me know if there's pieces you want me to cover in particular that you, I don't already have done. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'm going to go record a, a play along with the backing track now, so uh, take a look for that as well. Thanks, see you again soon.